Hi folks, it's Nate Picos of Blambot, and today I thought we'd go over something pretty elementary in comics, the Thought Balloon, and how to make one. Actually, make two of them. Um, there's two ways, I guess. There's the default way that pretty much everyone makes a Thought Balloon, and then there's the one that I came up with that's, I think, a little bit better looking, and I'm going to show you both. So let me go to Illustrator. And here we've just got this block of text and we want to put a thought balloon on it. So you got your just generic default balloon here. And you want to go to the pen tool and start making points all along the circumference of the outline. Or the stroke rather. And they don't have to be equidistant. In fact it's probably better if they're not. It'll look slightly more organic. But you just do your points now you've got points all over this balloon and you go to effect distort and transform oops pucker and bloat turn the preview on and move the slider and see you get these the depth of the uh the little bumps sort of changes as you do this and coincidentally this is how you would also do uh, a burst if you slide it the other way but for now we're going to focus on thought balloons and we end up with something like that and if you want to make the tail, you go to the ellipse tool, you make an ellipse, you stick it down here, you make a slightly smaller one, oops, and you know, you, you just make your tail. And that's pretty much a default, how pretty much, you know, everybody does their balloon. But I was, um, a couple of years ago, I was really examining, I think it was Bill Oakley, who was, who was a fantastic letterer. You should look up Bill Oakley's work. And his, his thought balloons just look so interesting and dynamic that I wanted to sort of replicate them. So let me zoom out here. I'm in my, I'm in my default lettering template, by the way. And I started creating these balloons, all different sizes and shapes. But you'll notice that, you know, it's some of the, the bumps stick out further than others. They're they're sort of different shapes. It just sort of looked a little bit more dynamic to me. And how I did that is by taking a regular balloon, just like that one, and let me just grab some of these. I'm basically taking, you know, you grab your a smaller ellipse like that, but you want to use the shear tool and give it a little bit of an angle. And you make a couple different sizes of these, like so you see here and you just put them, you use the balloon <clears throat> sort of as your guide for how to put them and some of them stick out a little further and some of them are less and the, the pattern doesn't repeat you know I'm just sort of taking three or four different of these these ellipses and sort of overlapping them and once you've got that you can grab it and unite them and you've got sort of a more organic looking balloon right and the same goes, let me uh, step back here the same goes, grab one of these, for the tail. You know, you take that slightly angled ellipse and you can bring it, oops, let me uh, shoot that to the foreground. And you do slightly smaller ones and that's how you'd make the tail. And I think if I put these side by side, you'll be able to tell, you know, one looks a little bit better than the other way. Oop, my lettering layer is locked. There we go. And it helps if I copy it. Okay. So, and you know, I'd adjust this a little bit. Bring this in a little bit. But you, you know, you get the idea. And you, now you can see them side by side. And I, I think, oops, the Y and my is right up against that thing, isn't it? Ooh, good catch, Picos. Okay. So. I think you see that they look a little bit better, or at least I think it does. And here's the other thing you got to remember too. This is my pet peeve that I just did a a, a better letter letterer article about um, just the, earlier this week. Now let me get rid of that because I'm not going to use it um, in this. So let's say you've got a page with a bunch of thought balloons on it, and you know the text is going to be all different sizes. So a lot of letters would just grab whatever one balloon they have and, you know, blow it up huge. And that's how they would do all the thought balloons on the page, which this, this bums me out because it's, 
I like when the all the the bumps on thought balloons and on radio balloons, the spikes on radio balloons, are all sort of a vaguely uniform size. I mean, within reason, you know, because obviously these are all slightly different. But look how giant these look. You know, it doesn't look right. So that's why I, I made so many of these balloons different sizes and shapes because you know if I put a huge balloon I mean a huge amount of text I can you know stick one of these out here roughly get it to shape the shape that I need and look how much better that looks when they're shown side by side like it just looks more uniform and less distracting on the page it's cleaner I don't know maybe it's me so that's how you make uh, two different kinds of thought balloons. I'll talk to you later.